Fiat money is going to continue to be printed. You can't just print more silver. It needs to be mined. And there's a limited supply. Fiat money is going to continue to be printed up and to the point when a new monetary paradigm is activated. Central bank digital currency implementation is looming in the United States and this will be a new version of fiat money with all the trappings of the latest top of the line surveillance state technology. If it were only a wholesale CBDC, business to business, bank to bank, we could look at that and know the public isn't involved to an extent. If the CBDC develops to introduce the requirement for every account to be converted, including every US citizen's bank account, then that is a retail CBDC. This is generally the way that CBDCs are adopted in stages. We may start with a wholesale CBDC, but then we move on to a retail CBDC later on. All the while, we may also have the ability to use physical US dollars while all this is going on, but in a later stage, Federal Reserve notes will be demonetized. We haven't had real money like gold and silver, like what you see here on your screen, regularly circulating since 1933 and 1964, respectively, for the most part, in the United States at least. So we're used to fiat money for everyday transactions. What we're not used to is the having each one of those transactions and every aspect of the bank accounts themselves at the fingertips of the Federal Reserve. Hit the like button, please, if you're enjoying this video. People don't want this. U.S. citizens don't want this. This isn't even a partisan issue. It doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. Who really wants to lose freedom of privacy? I don't think people in general support the evolution to a monetary surveillance state because that's exactly what a central bank digital currency is. Everything online is already under surveillance and our phones, basically technology already exists in a surveillance bubble, but money doesn't, or it doesn't have to be that way. We have that freedom right now. It was President Woodrow Wilson who signed the Federal Reserve Act into law in 1913, and the idea was that the creation of the Fed was a perfect compromise. The Fed was to be decentralized, a decentralized central bank that's balanced the com that balanced the competing interests of private banks and the people. Now it's like, and let me know if I've missed something. The Fed is acting like a centralized central bank. Is this what we're expecting to happen? Are we going to be forced into using the new surveillance state digital currency system that violates our right to privacy? The whole CBDC topic is a next level catastrophe, but let's bring it home. Think about a $20 bill just in your lifetime. Think about how much less you can buy with $20 now versus going back as far as you can remember. One thing we could do is if we keep printing all this money is bring back the $500 bill. We'd probably need those eventually, but that's a sign of weakness. Creating a central bank digital currency, that's innovation. That's the new world order. That's this or that. That's that. I don't like not having the ability to have a physical form of money, just the thought of it is suffocating. I mean, why control people's money to that extent for no reason? So there's got to be a reason. If you agree that there's got to be a reason, smash the like button. The onslaught of CBDC implementation is what made me a prepper. 
So I look into getting food, water, all that stuff in addition to precious metals. And it's central bank digital currencies that drove me to that. The issue of privacy is my primary concern with these digital currencies. We already have the fiat money now with the US dollar. We already have fiat, but a CBDC is a digital form of fiat with built-in trackers that store and save every single thing about your earnings, your spending, and your saving. The analytics that are going to be sent to the Fed based on CBDC accounts is incredible. They're gonna know everything just by looking at those accounts. What type of privacy is that? That's the loss of financial privacy, monetary privacy, I should say, in the United States. And all that information will be able to be handed over to whichever uh, U.S. entity is asking for it because it's there. It's part of a person's record. So just plainly speaking, in American terms, what should be the course of action in any event? Should the people fear the government or should the government fear the people? Implementing a CBDC in the United States is downright un-American and unconstitutional. Around the world, CBDCs are moving forward. The United States is far from the only country adopting digital currencies. The Bank of International Settlements, the BIS, in Switzerland recently released a new survey that shows global CBDCs are largely on track for implementation. Some CBDC projects around the world have been slightly delayed, and that's what they're showing, but for the most part, they're moving forward. They're still coming. And I want to make one thing clear. The Fed wants to implement a retail CBDC in the United States. The Fed chair has stated this this year. We're inching closer to a new monetary paradigm while living in a world very similar to what we've seen and what we've always known, that's gonna, that's about to change with the CBDC. This is all about to change. And we are the people who have been chosen to live in this critical time and navigate the changing rules, the changing world we're experiencing. If you have the authority, if you have the contacts, I'm urging you, stand with real Americans. This isn't a left or right issue. This is an American issue. We get that transactions will be faster and payments involving criminal organizations will be tracked, but you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Every transaction will be tracked and that is an overstep from this CBDC system. Very fitting in this situation. Benjamin Franklin said those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. This pairs up exactly with what I'm saying. As an alternative to storing my wealth and fiat money, and of course some fiat money is needed to pay bills and expenses and things like that, the alternative is holding your wealth in gold and silver. I'm not here to sell you any particular gold or silver. It's sold everywhere all over the world. As a human being, I urge people to put a little bit of their savings into gold and silver. You can always sell the gold and silver and get money back if you need it. But while you're holding these precious metals, you're going to be better off because the gold and silver is going to keep up with inflation and you're just holding on the paper money right now or holding on to money in your savings account most likely your purchasing power is declining just due to inflation i'm always buying silver i mean i buy silver all the time i mean i think i pick up new silver just about every week gold is considerably more expensive than silver so i buy a little bit here and there when i can the thing is silver 
has a lot more upside potential, so I'm typically drawn to silver purchases when given the option, but both metals have their place, so I buy both. My most recent pickup, actually, my two most recent gold pickups, one of them is this pre-33 gold coin, US Half Eagle, this is an old $5 gold piece. And uh, as you can see, my collection of pre-33 gold Half Eagles is growing. That's one, I picked that up, so I really like that coin. I like co uh, collecting those, collecting and stacking them. And um, I love the, the old pre-33 gold for the history of it and there's some numismatic value to these old coins as well people just love collecting them and these are real American coins from long ago that contain 24.18 percent of a troy ounce so they're just barely shy of a quarter ounce of gold and I have another pickup um, actually let's see I'm gonna pull it out Okay, here it is. It's not exactly a pickup. It's a giveaway win that I got from Pistol Packing Pilots YouTube channel and it is a quarter ounce gold eagle 2023. And there it is. I think this flip doesn't want to pick up on camera, but this is another gold coin I picked up or I, I added to my stack since my last video and it's a quarter ounce American Gold Eagle um, pistol packing pilot was having a giveaway for some gold and I was the lucky winner so thank you very much to Triple P and Mrs. Triple P um, I really appreciate it I mean what a prize I, who, who wouldn't love to win gold that's, that's incredible very generous of you um, and Triple P, Pistol Packing Pilot, this is my favorite YouTube channel, has been for years. I'll drop a link at the end of the video. He covers a wide range of topics in his videos. So like I said, that's my favorite channel, so I think it's worth a look. Um, thank you very much, guys. This is just an incredible prize. Quarter ounce of gold. It's a 2023. Well, there it is. Very generous of you. So I got some gold, but my silver, my silver stacking is still outpacing my gold stacking for 2024. How has your stacking been going in 2024? Spot prices are up, premiums are up. How has this affected your stacking? Let me know in the comments. And have you stacked more gold or silver so far this year? Let me know in the comments. And if you're brand new here, you're watching this channel, but you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, leave me a comment, and send this video to someone who should listen to it. Do you like the pre-33 $5 Gold Eagle or the quarter ounce American Gold Eagle more? Stack wide as the ocean.